My dad was into Benny Goodman and things like that. Okay. My mother loved classical music, so there was a good mix of that. Oh. My grandmother was a concert pianist, and actually, if you go back in our family tree, I've got Felix Mendelssohn as a Whoa. ancestor. Not that, I've, not that it, it's something that seemed to have skipped some genes. I think it went in another part of the family, but it does go that, back that far. When did you start playing an instrument? An instrument when I was, I don't know, um, I was maybe nine or ten when I started playing clarinet. Okay. And I took that for, I did that for a couple of years, and it was, it was fun, except for one winter I unfortunately left it on the radiator overnight, and then I tried to put it back together again the next day, and it, it didn't happen. It was, it, it became, I don't know, some, some other instrument, well, I, I have no idea particularly what it, what it was, but it was unplayable as a clarinet. What made you gravitate towards the bass? How, how the heck did that happen? Well, that, I really started off as a singer more than anything else. Oh. Yeah, I was, I, actually as a kid, I sang at Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center in a choir. And then um, I eventually in ninth grade, yeah, ninth grade, uh, I was <laughs> the vocalist of a band that played mostly instrumentals, which is <laughs> just not the most rewarding gig. But they, they, were, they were actually pretty good for a bunch of 14-year-olds and then occasionally do a few Deep Purple covers. So oh. I did channel my inner Ian Gillen for, for the best of my ability. I don't have those, those sky notes, but I can, I can cover them. But what happened was, um, at one point, I don't know for what reason, the bass player in the band had to leave for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to keep rehearsing. And so the guitar player very patiently just, you know, he left his bass with me and he started, and he just taught me, you know, maybe five songs, so just so we could keep, re keep rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And you know, you strap this thing on, and of course I'm in a room full of bass players mm -hmm. here. You strap this thing on, oh my lord. Uh, you know, it's just the, the vibration just goes right through mm -hmm. you. And it's like, this is, and you know, I'm 14 years old, the hormones are, <laughs> and, and this was just, this is incredible. I've got to keep playing this and I've got to keep learning it. And so I eventually, actually my first bass is Precision, which I bought because I had, I was playing pinball, I had a dollar left, I, I scored some high, high games, so all I had a dollar left when the place closed, and I bought off a scratch-off ticket. And my, the first thing I ever had, scratch-off ticket I ever bought, I was maybe 16, and shit, I've won $500. Oh, man. So I went down to Manny's. Sure. And I bought myself a Precision, uh, very similar right. to this little baby right here. Right. What were P bases back then? Three fifty. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was between three fifty four hundred, okay. I think. And so, I did this, and I just started playing with everything that was on the radio. Wow. You know, just to tune my ears. I'm self taught, mm. and I just started jamming with that. And when I was about eighteen or so, um, some guys in the band knew about. You know, as a bass player, you can always. Word. Yeah, you you know, word gets around that you can play, and I joined them, and sort of as a singer, you know, I split some of the vocals, and we just started playing three times a week, four times a week, and we would just play, we started to play all the clubs, and actually the, the, the first, uh, anticipating your question, yeah. the, the first gig was, you, know, you probably remember Great Gildersleeves. Yeah. So we played Great Gildersleeves, and our girlfriends thought it would be a terrific idea to, you know, for a bunch of 18-year-old, 19-year-olds, they rented a stretch limo for us for the, to show up there for the first gig. And this was a blast. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting this. I think I thought I was just, you know, getting to the, you know, some tiny little thing, and there it is in front of the, the apartment. So we go down there, and we pull around up 3rd Avenue like that, the Bowery, and there's another stretch right in front of there. And the rear door of that car opens, and this guy sort of staggers out. He's go, hey, that's... That's Ace Freely, and he's and he turns around. And he, he's looking at who the fuck are these guys? You know, a bunch of you know. And we walked out of there, and we played. You know, we, we got up on stage. We did our thing. Ace was face down on the his table, and that's also sort of where I really got bitten by the bug, mm. the performing bug. Because halfway through the first set, the guitar players, one of the guitar players' amps blew out just in the middle of his lead, and so here we are, the three of us. The rest of us are just sort of cycling three chords, like this. And I turned to the other guitar player. I said, "Come on, go ahead." And he's like, 
and I'm like this. And he's like, come on, you got to play something. <laughs> and he said, no. And so I said, well, shit, I got to do something. So I, <laughs> I flew forward, did a, a knee dive, Ooh. and just started playing something. I think probably the best way to describe it is avant-garde <laughs> uh, is probably what I played. But the audience went, cool. yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> but the audience went nuts. You know, and there was 200 people there. And it's like, oh, my God, this is just a, a wave wow. of approval coming my direction. So that Jeez. totally... Told that you know that said okay this is what I'm gonna do That's, you know we kept playing for another couple you know we yeah. played around town um, and then I just really started getting more into the songwriting and mm -hmm. also the production because as a kid I used to always have the headphones on I'd be listening to Led Zeppelin right, or the sure. Beatles and you can just hear all the separation going on and you know every track that's that's in there and so I said well Jesus I want to produce so I you know I went down to I applied to Miami not really thinking I was going to get in there because stuck, yeah. I'm self-taught I don't know how to read music right. but I passed I'll pass the audition and um, got down there and it was you know I come in there thinking I'm a hot shit bass player from New York City <laughs> and quickly got disavowed of that well um, it was an, it was an eye-opener because hmm. you know you're I was came from this, I was like this, I was, want to say a big fish, but I was a, a minor fish in a very yeah. small fishbowl, yeah. and all of a sudden here is some serious, you know, you had, as I said, Steve Bailey was going around there, sure. and I've told you off camera my Jocko story here. Uh, yeah, sure, on camera. Well, there was one class that you had to, you had a week to put together one song and perform it live in front of the class, oh, yeah. and we picked, I want to say it was... Uh, uh, stung, stung by your right hip, stealing. Oh, okay. Stealing, you know, and it's got the triplet field. Dun, 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 yeah, and yeah. I was going to sing, Take me across the water. Oh, sweet and Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it was stealing, yeah, it was from, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, he walks, you know, I'm getting ready to play, and it in walks Jocko. And I'm like, Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and, you know, then, okay, one, two, three, four. <laughs> dun, 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 Take me across. And, of course, then I, my time completely oh. slid up. And Jocko didn't give a flying shit about me. <laughs> he was talking to the, the one person, unfortunately, who was watching me intently was the teacher there who just totally reamed me out after this lousy performance. Yeah. Well, I yeah. spent the year down in Miami and it really learned a lot. I mean, yeah. all of a sudden, I learned... Really, all the stuff that I taught myself internally, I realized, I learned the reasons for why the fifths would sound mm -hmm. good, or why the music theory, or why when you stack harmonies a certain way. It was just reaffirming what I sort of knew instinctively, mm -hmm. and now was making it official. And so, and of course, I brought back a lot of knowledge yeah. back up to the city. And then I started a band with a, another fellow. Uh, we started a band called RPM, and we played all over the place. Uh, and we were, do, we were playing so often and we were getting such response that I just didn't want to go back to school after that. I yeah. thought, this is my chance. Yeah. You know, we, we had one gig, we opened up for Peter Wolf when he, was, yeah. when he left uh, Jay Giles. I think yeah. this, so this is 83, 84, right. something like that. And uh, we just kept doing that for about three or four years, but it just, it, it, it lost its momentum at a certain time. We kept having to recycle drummers, and you always have to go back to square one. You know, I, I like sure. playing in trios, okay. and that's sort of where that fell apart. And then, you know, I just picked up a couple other bands that, you know, certainly no one famous, but we would continue to play all the different clubs as the, the clubs evolved down in the village. Sure. Uh, you know, all these these places, and um, eventually, I wound up. Having to wanting to having to make money, and so I moved more into the computer area, mm -hmm. which of course is then what is going to help me out later as computer technology is involved in the recording aspect. Right, it's all digital. Yeah, because right. all the stuff that I learned down in Miami for recording didn't apply anymore. Yeah. I've, well, I moved up out of the city. I live up in Westchester now, and I play with some guys up in Maya Pack, and uh, we play you know we play covers, and I'm starting to introduce my originals uh -huh. in. So you know I'm hoping to just you know get up and maybe open for a few places. Is it like it's uh, at Daryl's place? Mm. This type of thing, and we're just playing a circuit. I'll I can plug the band here. We're called Slow Burn. Yeah. They're gonna love this. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, so with the, I'm doing that, and still, you know, I the nice thing is I have a house. I have a recording studio, and I just yeah. keep I just keep on going. You can catch additional episodes and much more by visiting us on the web at knowyourbassplayer.com. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you next time here on Know Your Bass Player.